You only need to know me. I will be the one. So this is going to blow some minds, but I think the red line was created because in the distant past, the waters had risen so high the rest of the world was washed away and there were only a few survivors. Among them were God's chosen people, the Celestial Dragons. We see the helmets and outfits of Celestial Dragons as spacesuits, but what if they are actually helmets people wear them when going underwater? Remember the bubbles of the Straw Hats war when going underwater for Fishman Island to breathe underwater? And so instead of spacesuits, it's kind of like the Celestial Dragon's helmets which may or not let them breathe underwater as well. Or maybe it's just some symbolic, or something symbolic of a time when the world was flooded. Now admittedly, the theory of a great flood destroying the world in the past, causing the void century, this has been around and largely discussed as a One Piece community theory since the reveal of Noah's Ark during Fishman Island. Perhaps used to save the rest of life on the planet in the past, and from that populations we see today had survived. I would imagine this great flood is tied to the great cleansing, and as I've said in other videos, the great cleansing is tied to the use of the mother flame technology, or creation or something similar in the past, to destroy islands around the world. It seems like all the ancient weapons can be used for a similar effect in terms of destroying islands, but also raising the sea levels as was revealed in chapter 1089, if the Mother Flame is a recreation of an ancient weapon in the past. We don't know what the Mother Flame is yet. It was created by Vegapunk for the world government, likely based on old tech from the ancient kingdom or manuscripts based on the knowledge from Ohara. Emu seems to have ultimate authority to deploy it, or to command its use via the Gorosei. Maybe that's why Saturn, the Saturn Gorosei, was sent to Egghead Island, because Emu will command the Gorosei to use it there. But why would the Mother Flame cause islands to both disappear and waters to rise? There might also be a way to destroy the Mother Flame now that I think about it, or for others to control it, if it is linked to or the imitation of an ancient weapon. Maybe like Pluton, there were blueprints to clone Uranus. I've always wondered if Nami would serve some bigger purpose beyond being a navigator. Nami wanting to make a map of the entire world to document every island. That's kind of connected to documenting islands that are said to not exist, right? Even islands like God Valley or Laugh Tale, or the Ancient Kingdom or Lusia Kingdom as it was destroyed or erased from the maps of the world. Given the apparent ability of the Mother Flame entity that destroyed the islands of Elusia Kingdom to control the weather, this also ties into Nami's ability to control the weather which has only expanded thanks to the weather cloud homie Zeus stolen from Big Mom. And then we have the egg on Egghead Island and Vegapunk's science or technology being responsible for the creation of the Mother Flame and tie that into Nami's weather egg, Nami's weather egg science and we go down an even deeper rabbit hole. In chapter 1089, we go back to Egghead Island and one of the scenes we had originally left off from Egghead Island at. The scene of Saturn and Kizaru. The scene of Saturn and Kizaru, accompanied by a bunch of government and navy ships and a lot of vice admirals, seems like they are planning to stop the Straw Hats from escaping, blocking all the exits from Egghead Island. I'd imagine they might be planning to do to Egghead Island, as I've said, what was done to Lusia Kingdom. But then again, it does seem like they're trying not to damage too much technology there, but given that Luffy and the others are there and they've learned too much, they might be willing to destroy it all. And I've personally questioned if Dragon and Vegapunk have developed a counter to whatever destroyed Lusia. I understand Vegapunk's creations are said to be imperfect, and I'm pretty sure Vegapunk knows what their imperfections are. So what is the fatal flaw of the Mother Flame? What weakness might it have? just like Kuma, or the cloning of Kaido's Devil Fruit, or even that lightsaber that released a bunch of bugs, I think, between Bonnie and Vegapunk, or anything else Vegapunk views as defective. Could there be a flaw or vulnerability in the design of the Mother Flame that somebody like Nami or somebody else could encounter and exploit? Chapter 1089 gives us news about disasters occurring around the world, I would imagine other islands are being destroyed, erased, or sunk to the bottom of the sea, 
There's a giant hole where Luzia Kingdom used to be, and the sea levels around it are elevated. If you watched my video on Imu, the Ancient Kingdom, and the Lost Kingdom of Mu, which covers the story of Atlantis, you might have noticed how I pointed out that this might be the outcome. This could be true for God Valley as well. That island was erased and is said to no longer exist, just like Luzia Kingdom. And this is certainly connected to why a giant hole exists at any lobby where the water appears to descend into the earth endlessly, into the void. The water is sinking into nothingness, the void. The weather around where Luzia Kingdom used to be seems distorted, just like the weather around any lobby as the sky above is now always sunny and is referred to as the Nightless Island. It is never night there for some reason. Someone in my comment section even dropped a spoiler about the chapter and then tied it to the endless daytime and so nightless island of the inside of the whale, known as Laboon, that was made artificially by Crocus. The interior of the whale Laboon holds an artificial island with a cabin for Crocus to vacation in. This chamber is painted with an unknown material that not only resembles the daytime sky complete with clouds, but apparently produces its own light. Does it not remind you of the nightless island of Eni's lobby, where light is always shining? Does it not remind you of Imu's lost or phantom chamber where light is shining despite being indoors? Then again, the light in Imu's lost chamber might come from some windows above that we just haven't seen yet, but who knows? So again, there's a giant hole where Luzia Kingdom used to be and the sea levels around it are elevated. Something is happening in these places where the weather or reality is distorted. We see Imu in the panel as if Oda wants us to know that Imu is directly responsible. And so we can tie this to the theories of Imu as either Mother Nature or the Sea Devil or at the very least connected to them in some way. It is theorized that the sea being the mother of nature detests the unnatural nature of devil fruits, thus taking away the power and ability to swim of those that have eaten devil fruits as punishment. God's punishment. The sea's punishment. The sea hates devil fruit users and this pattern of punishment by the sea against those that traverse it is continued when you gloss over the One Piece wiki and type in the word sea. This is what I found. We have the sea forest of Fishman Island which is known as the Ship Graveyard. A place where ships, especially of pirates, go to die in a way, sunk to the bottom below. We have another enemy of ships on the water the Sea Kings, who are controlled by the ancient weapon Poseidon, Shirohoshi. The Sea Kings make trade and travel difficult for anyone trying to cross the water where they are found, as they are exceptionally fierce and strong compared to many other sea creatures. The edge of the calm belt is said to be their natural breeding ground, thus leading to the calm belt almost completely cutting off some islands from the rest of the world, due to the Sea Kings and the sea. Just like the red line cuts off some parts of the world. Then there is Sea Stone where, after centuries of ruling the sea, the Sea King's control over the calm belt has been lessened, weakened, due to Dr. Vegapunk discovering that Sea Stone emits the same aura as the sea. And so the Sea Kings ignore or don't take notice of ships they are repelled by ships that are coated in Sea Stone. And so for the first time, ships can move in and out of the Grand Line freely. And there is also something known as the Sea of Survival, the given name to the first half of One Piece and spans from chapter 1 to 597. The plot follows a pirate as we know Monkey D. Luffy and his quest to form a pirate crew and sail to the Grand Line to find the fabled One Piece, which will make Luffy the Pirate King, the King of the Sea, the freest man on the sea, unimpeded by any obstacle or construct including the red line, I would imagine. It is immediately followed by the final sea, the New World Saga. Now this might blow your mind, but let's go back to Imu possibly being or being tied to the sea devil and the sea as Mother Nature. Imu is the king of the world, the king of the blue sea, the blue planet, the blue sea planet that is planet Earth, then. The king of the celestial dragon sitting atop the red line, some say that Imu could be based on the devil, Satan or Lucifer, the fallen angel. I pointed out in these videos on the screen here that Oda might have flipped the script and had the devil defeat God, taking his throne for himself. 
turning the world upside down. Interesting then that God is known for causing a great flood, and Imu might be the devil pretending to be God. So both mythologies work here in one character. So now two points before the mind-blowing connection that I mentioned. Imu's full name is revealed in the book of Genesis, read by Avonkov and Sabo. This ties into the Christianity again, and the Genesis flood narrative from the book of Genesis. It is a Hebrew flood myth that tells of God's decision to return the universe, the world, to its pre-creation state of watery chaos and remake it through the microcosm of Noah's Ark. According to these accounts, a divine flood was sent as punishment for the sins of humanity. The flood was intended to cleanse the world and give humanity a fresh start. In the biblical story, Noah and his family were instructed to build an ark and gather others to survive the flood. They were deemed righteous by God and were saved from the destruction. Could this refer then to the celestial dragon bloodline? Interesting that Shanks was found on God Valley and possibly the Figoland family bloodline was taken or rescued from God Valley prior to its destruction. But some Christians have preferred to interpret the narrative of the Great Flood as describing a local flood instead of a global event. Water and chaos also tie into the devil where the book of Revelation refers to the beast rising out of the sea, symbolizing the emergence of evil forces or powers in the world. In the Bible, Leviathan is known as the dragon of the sea, sometimes conflated with the image of the devil, endangering God's creatures by threatening them with upheaval in the waters of chaos. And so water, dragons, the devil, and God. Does this not tie into the god of the celestial dragons, Imu, Nerona, who even has a dragon claw statue possibly dedicated to him, and connections to the sea devil and the sea itself, especially now with sea levels of watery chaos rising around the world? Now the mind-blowing connection to this that I alluded to, to the sea and the dragon and Imu, is the sea currents of One Piece. The sea currents are said to be directed movements that determine the way water acts on a sea. They are forces of major importance in the One Piece world. It's possible these currents and changing weather are contributing to the strange holes in the ground that we see for Luzia and Eddie's lobby, especially after the aftermath of Luzia's destruction. It is further said the only place where one cannot find sea currents are in the calm belts, taking us back to the Sea Kings. But what really stood out to me is this picture on the screen here, where the sea currents of One Piece are described. What do you notice? You should notice that the deep and surface sea currents are depicted by a dragon. It is said that all currents eventually connect to each other, even if they don't flow in the same direction, rising up and down like a dragon tangled around itself. And so the devil or dragon that rises from the sea in the Bible causing watery chaos, the sea devil, Imu. Water plays such a major role in Oda's story. There are so many strange watery phenomena going on, and this takes us to the final part of the video. The destruction of Lusia Kingdom is still felt six days later, as a huge earthquake starts and is felt by people all around the world. Ask yourself now, if there's a reason Oda chooses certain locations to show us here, in terms of the reaction to this earthquake stemming from the rising sea after the destruction of Luzia Kingdom, we can see Momonosuke in Wano Kuni, an iceberg in Water 7, and Imu in the Holy Land of Merijawa, and Laboon in or at the Twin Capes, and some prisoners in Impel Down, some citizens in Logetown, and Ivankov in Kamabaka, Queendom along with some other random islands, too. Momonosuke and Wano tie into the ancient weapon that is flooded and hidden under Wano. Iceberg and Water 7 were involved in an arc that revealed the existence of Wano's ancient weapon, Pluton. Curious that Water 7 is also tied to water, obviously. Enduring the water that is conquering the sea with a sea train. Imu is responsible for what's going on, and Ivanko revealed Imu's full name, Imu Narona. Imu of the Narona family to us. Impel Down is submerged underwater. 
Lowtown is the town where Roger died and you all know the theory about the One Piece as stated by Uderon and O'Hara and the Japanese One Piece community as being down below. Down below underwater. I think this is all connected somehow. What would happen if you went down the hole where Lusia Kingdom used to be? Or the one at Eni's lobby? Is there a hole that takes you to Laugh Tale or God Valley? So I want you guys to now consider how it was revealed that the sea around the world has risen by one meter, sinking many islands due to the rising sea levels. How the rising sea ties into the end of One Piece, as well as how the rising sea gives us a glimpse into the distant past, into the void, into Imu and Imu's ultimate plan. Potentially even the true purpose or origin story of the Red Line. Wano is high up in the air. The island of Wano is high above ground. It's almost as if something was done to Wano to protect it and the samurai and Kazuki clan from being flooded like the rest of the world. As we know that parts of Wano were flooded in the past and the ancient weapon that resides in or under Wano was flooded as well. And this ties into what Kazuki Odin alluded to as well as he warned about as he died. As he warned about an ancient enemy in the past, possibly the world government, or Imu. How the borders of Wano were closed. And so in a way, the borders of Wano were somehow artificially raised as well. To make it high above sea level. To protect it maybe from a similar flood. Just like Zunisha is walking so high above the ground, carrying the Mink tribe, the height of Zunisha coincidentally protects them from being flooded too. Zunisha's tall legs keep it high above the water. And it's a strange coincidence that Wano and Zunisha are historically tied. The Minks and the Samurai of Wano have a historical bond, as was revealed to us. And both Wano and Zunisha contain a road poneglyph that is protected in a way from the flood. And Fishman Island as well has a road poneglyph too. The massive bubble that supports Fishman Island also appears to contain the area where road poneglyph was once located. These three areas, Wano, Zo on Zunisha, as well as Fishman Island, are protected from the water or a flood in some way. And the Fishmen can obviously survive a flood on their own. So now consider this, the red line separates the new world and paradise. Have you ever wondered why Oda would call one half of the One Piece world paradise? The term paradise is often associated with a place of perfect beauty, peace and happiness. In the Bible, the concept of paradise is mentioned in various contexts. In the Old Testament, the Garden of Eden is often referred to as paradise. It was a place of abundance and harmony where Adam and Eve lived in the presence of God before their disobedience. In a way then, Luffy and others disobey God, or Imu, by daring to travel to the New World in search of the One Piece and the true history. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks of paradise in relation to the afterlife. Jesus tells the thief on the cross next to him, Truly I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. This suggests that paradise is a place of eternal joy and communion with God. That those that join God will never die. Imu Narona is immortal. The Gorosei seem to be very old. And they all might have survived the great flood in the past. Along with those living in paradise today. So is Imu going to flood the new world? Whereas slight aftershocks and many floods might be experienced in paradise, but Imu's wrath, God's anger, is directed ultimately at the New World. Is the One Piece and Laugh Tale located in the New World, and all Imu has to do is flood the New World to stop people from reaching there, from reaching Laugh Tale and the One Piece? Could there be a parallel between the Noah, between Noah's Ark and the Red Line, as in, the same way Luffy was going to destroy Noah, but he was stopped because it served a broader purpose. Could this also be true for the Red Line? Is it not possible that all our past theories about the Red Line being destroyed are wrong, and the Red Line is necessary to stop the coming flood? Or does Imu's apparent plan to cleanse the world again by flooding it, 
Does this not make the theory even stronger? If my idea that Emu plans to flood the new world involves flooding even paradise as well, so that the sea level rises on one or either side, except for the top of the red line, the Holy Land then will be spared, God's people shown mercy, the celestial dragon saved by Emu. Is it not possible the destruction of the red line will lead to the water levels falling, that the sea might rise on either side? And so while Luffy's friends by the rising sea levels are threatened in the new world in paradise, destroying the red line, this will lead the water levels to fall, because now they can occupy the space where the red line once resided. Yes, the red line is a dam. People have used dams for many centuries to help prevent or stop flooding. The ancient Mesopotamians may have been some of the first humans to build dams even. And so the red line, a massive red dam, might have been created in the ancient past to stop the coming flood. But as usual, we will have to wait and see. Anyways, hit that like button and subscribe. Share the video with your friends if everybody's asking about what the rising sea levels could mean. Share it on Reddit or wherever, Twitter. And this video might answer that question for them. And leave a comment with your thoughts below to help the algorithm. You can also find me on Twitter at the following address at Vinland Ragnar. My Twitter page is on the screen. If you want to discuss stuff there, one piece or otherwise, I always make sure to respond or interact in one way or another with my followers on Twitter. Also check out my spoiler channel called Vinland Leaks where I cover the spoilers and give you guys early access to hear my early theories on the spoilers and discuss in the comments. I'll be turning your comments into videos starting this week. And check out my news channel where I'll be covering and breaking news about the One Piece community and the One Piece series to you guys in the coming weeks. Again, links will be in the description box and pinned in the comments section below. As always, there's more to come. Until next time.